Hello, I'm Mike Salem. My dad, Pastor Salem, loved to spread the good news of Jesus to provide hope and encouragement to people all over the world through his biblical teachings and sermons. You will experience that truth from God's word in today's message. Now let's join Pastor Salem. I'm Pastor Salem and I want to welcome you to the Christian Worship Hour. And today is a very, very special day because it's, uh, we're having our Mother's Day this Sunday. And uh, so we want to honor the mothers, especially the Christian mothers, but all the mothers. And God bless them. We're so thankful for them. And uh, my message today is going to be in, is entitled, Let Me Tell You About My Mother. And my mother was a glorious, wonderful, wonderful, glorious woman. And I owe her so much. And so I'm going to, that's going to be my message. But before the message, you know, we always read some of our letters. Uh, because uh, a lot of times people, uh, we get letters and people say, oh, we'd like to hear from this. We always enjoy hearing about this person and that person. And then another thing, we can pray for these people that we get their letters from. And so uh, I'm just going to share some of the letters. Then we'll have our message. The first letter I'm looking at today is from New Carlisle, Indiana. And it said, um, I listen every Sunday and enjoy your old-time church service. It's helped my walk with Jesus. I lived alone for 11 years since I lost my husband to cancer 42 years ago. Your program is a great comfort to me, and I have told many of my friends also. And I underlined it where it says, I've told many friends, many of my friends. I hope you'll tell your friends. That'd be the best thing. Just tell them, tune us in, give us a try. Here is a letter from Olivet, South Dakota. Just a short note to thank you for all your gospel preaching sermons. And by the way, this is from a cow. Uh, this is from a. Uh, this is from a cowboy, a Christian man, and uh, this is what he writes: "You folks are always in our prayers. We enjoy the singing and your sermons so much, and they're from the Bible and true. Please remember me in your prayers." I was in the hospital for a week, and they said I have throat cancer. I'm trusting in God for healing, and I'm not taking any of the chemo or, uh, or radiation. This might be the old cowboy's last ride, but I'll stay on for the eight seconds. I know God can heal. He's the great physician. Praise the Lord. Love in Jesus' name. I tell you, I love these, these people. I was raised in the 30s out in western South Dakota near Belfouche. It's a cow town. And there's cowboys and ranchers all over the place. And I'm going to tell you something about them. Whether they're Christians or not Christians, they're honest. And you're, they don't hide behind a veneer. You see what you get. And I just, uh, and they're just honest. I just uh, think the world of them. And many of them know Jesus. Many of them know the Lord. And we pray that many more will come to know the Lord because in the Lord alone is salvation. And if you don't have Jesus, you don't have anything. And now here is uh, St. David, Arizona. Just wanted to let you know that I enjoy your sermons. I've lived as a hermit on monastery grounds for 23 years now. But two surgeries keeps me homebound, so you're my church service. I connected to Catholicism at age 16, but God is found everywhere, so your take on the holy mystery is no problem for me. It is a joy. And you know that the reason this connects so much is because we're just Jesus. We're looking at Jesus. We're all eyes on Jesus, and because he is the only way. Jesus says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So all eyes on Jesus. And I might just add that if you wonder about your salvation, we have a little booklet, about 14 pages, and we send it out on a free will offering basis. And I'll give the address at the close of the service, so get your pencil ready, and we'd be glad to send you a copy of that. Here is one from Rogers, Minnesota. I've been a quadriplegic since 1970 due to a motorcycle accident caused by a hit and run drunk driver. Although I lost the use of my arms and legs, I truly believe that I gained a great deal more when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior and as my Lord on St. Patrick's Day 38 years ago. 
Well, this dear brother is exactly right because that spirit and soul lasts forever. The body is very temporary, but the spirit and soul lasts forever. And we're going to talk about that next the Lord's Day, next service. We're going to talk about the blessings of, of death. And uh, you say, oh, there's no blessings in death. That's the worst thing can happen to you. Well, you tune in next week and we'll be talking about that. But here's a dear brother and he's incapacitated now. But he's thankful that he came through this all. He came to know Jesus. He was saved. And he is exactly right. And the day will come when you have a new body. We'll all have new bodies, a resurrected body. And won't that be something? So we thank all of you. And if you'd like to write to us, let me give you our address. It's the Christian Worship Hour. And the box is 2002, 2002. We're in Aberdeen, South Dakota, 57402. And we'd love to hear from you. And maybe we'll read your letter. We can't read all of them, but we read a lot of them. And uh, I mean, read, read them on the air. We read all the mail we get, and we try to answer every question that's given to us. Well, this is Mother's Day, and we honor our mothers, and well, we should. Every, all of us have a mother, and uh, I had a mother that was a wonderful, wonderful person. She was the making of me. If it hadn't have been for my mother, God only knows what I would be today. And so I want to tell you about my mother. First of all, I wanted you to tell her, I want to tell you about her faith. That's where I got my faith, from my mother. She demonstrated it. She taught it. She lived it. And out of that, out of her life and out of her teachings and all of the rest of it, I found a faith. And, it, and that, wonderful, that wonderful mother of mine, she read that Bible and she prayed. And she prepared me so that when I had the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ, I accepted the Lord at the first invitation I ever heard in, a, in an evangelistic meeting. I went to accept Jesus. I remember we used to, we lived out on a farm and we went to, uh, we had church in the, in the country school and uh, they had an evangel evangelist come. Um, his name was Vernon Egebrotten and he was a Christian Missionary Alliance pastor and he came in an evangelist, and he came and he preached. I was 10 years old, and I remember it yet. He told of how that we need to come to Jesus because we all have our sins, and we can come to Jesus, and he'll wash away those sins in the blood of the Lamb. And so we need to come to Jesus, and that's what I did. The first time I ever heard the message, I went that night. I knelt at the recitation bench, and I prayed. And I pray that Jesus would just come into my heart and take away my sin. And so I'm thankful for that evangelist, but I'm thankful for my mother. My mother had it all set. She, I, knew all about, I knew about Jesus. I knew that he was loving and kind. I knew that he died on the cross to pay for my sins. I knew that he loved me because he, he, God so loved the world. And so uh, it was easy for me to come. Thank God for my mother. It was a lot like Timothy. Paul wrote of that young man and the preparation of, and the uh, preparation of his heart. And he talks about that in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5. He said, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. And so here Paul is, is saying, uh, here's your grandmother, and here's your mother, Timothy, and they've taught you about Jesus, and you have that faith because of your mother and your, your mother and your grandmother helped you to come to Jesus. And also we're told in Acts 16, verse 1, that Timothy's father was a Greek, and, and then we never read anything more about him, and so we assume that he was not a Christian. But somehow she married him, and so, and so alone... Here she is. She's going to raise this little son, Timothy, to know the Lord. And I'm going to tell you, if you're a single mother and you're alone, you just stay with Jesus and you trust Jesus and, and God will help you and help you along the way and you can bring those children to know the Lord. It happened in Timothy's life. And it happened in my, my, my mother's life because my dad was gone much of the time. He wasn't a Christian. And so uh, he was doing business a lot of times instead of being in church. But my mother, my mother was the one that helped me. 
And while you're thinking, I want to tell you that my dad, he did come to know the Lord. Years later, he went forward and accepted Jesus Christ, and I'm going to see him in heaven. And that'll be some t just wonderful. So Paul rejoices in Timothy. And a little bit later, he says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15, he says, from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. So Timothy didn't have the New Testament, and he didn't have all these scriptures, but his mother explained them and taught them, and this is the way Paul said, it makes thee wise unto salvation. That is, your mother taught you, so you knew about accepting Jesus. You knew it was something you needed to do and had to do to be saved. And you were all ready when the gospel came and you opened your heart to Jesus. God bless mothers, mothers who live for the Lord and help their children along. My mother's faith and training for me made it possible for me to accept Jesus as my Savior. And then second, I want to tell you about her Bible. That was a sacred book to her. It was without a doubt the Word of God. And over and over, she kept telling us and pointing us out this, that this is God's word to us. It is the only book. There aren't a lot of books. There's just one book. There's just one holy Bible. And, I, and I'm going to tell you, she loved that book, and she revered it, and she obeyed it, and that taught us to obey it as best she could. And, you know, I, I think so, I remember about my mother, she never placed anything on that Bible. She never laid anything on top of that Bible. That Bible was the top of the stack. It was above everything. And here I am, 90 years later, and I don't lay anything on my Bible. I lay, to some, I lay a paper on it. It doesn't look right. It doesn't feel right. It isn't right. And, and so I... She just taught us that this is God's word. You revere it and you love it and you trust it. And something else about it that I remember, I never, uh, I never saw my mother write in her Bible. She didn't underline anything. She didn't make any notes. She just kept it as a beautiful book. It about wore it out, but she never wrote in it or marked in it. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong in marking your Bible. I mark my Bible. But to my mother, it was so sacred. She didn't want to desecrate it in any way. And it taught me that this is a special book. You listen to it. It's God's only word. There's not a lot of different Bibles and a lot of different teachings. It's all in one book from Genesis to Revelation. That's all God's going to have to say to us. And these people coming around, oh, they got another revelation. They learn some more. They know some more. They add to the Bible. You can't add anything to the Bible. It's all in those 66 books, Genesis to Revelation, and that's the total. And so this wonderful God, this wonderful Bible. And uh, I, I remember, too, that uh, so many times the Bible, I've been in homes, and the Bible is cast off in one place or another, and you can't find it, and, and it isn't de it's desecrated if it even is in the home. Most homes always used to have a Bible. I don't know how it is now. But uh, I remember Charles Haddon Spurgeon, he said in most homes, he says, there's enough dust in the Bible so you can write damnation on it. And so make that your book, your sacred book. I remember reading the story of a pastor he called in a home. And when he was ready to go, he said, well, I'd, I'd like to read a little from the Bible. And the little girl was there. And so the mother said to the little girl, Go and get the book that mother loves and bring it to the pastor. And wouldn't you know it, she went out and came back with a cookbook. And that, well, how would the poor little thing know? She never saw her mother with the Bible, and she did with the cookbook, so that was it. Well, she's not the only one, and we have to be careful that we usually give that, give that Bible the place it deserves and love it and obey it. And then my mother used to tell to tell me about her prayers. I want to tell you about her prayers. My mother used to, as, as little children, she had five children. And I remember at night, she'd tuck us into bed. And then she would read that from that Bible, or, or uh, read from a, a Bible story book. It was, she just, just didn't read the Bible, but she had a story book that she read about lion, Daniel in the lion's den, Peter walking on the water, all of those stories. Oh, my goodness. 
And so she would read us that from that Bible or read it from the storybook. And then she'd give us a prayer. She'd pray. And then she'd give us a kiss. Mother would pray at mealtime. And mother would pray when we had Sunday school at home. But I never heard my mother pray in public. She was a timid lady. And uh, she, would, could, she could stand, she could, uh, she could pray with her children, but she couldn't pray in public. If you ask her to stand up and give her testimony in a church, she couldn't do it. If you ask her to pray in public, she couldn't do it. But I'm going to tell you a little secret. Of all the people I know on earth, my mother was the best Christian of all. And she couldn't pray in public. So if you can't pray in public, don't let them lay it on you and say, well, you should get more spiritual. If you had a closeness to Jesus, you could talk out loud. You tell them, jump in the lake. I know better. And you don't pray to the people anyway, do you? We pray to God, and we can do that all alone. And so my mother taught us to pray. And believe me, she, those prayers changed my life. And I know I lived in a day we had hired men. And we'd have, oh, maybe three or four hired men. And one, their pay, favorite pastime would be, uh, they would uh, roll their own cigarettes. And they'd smoke them old cigarettes. And then the tobacco and the liquor and all the rest of it. And, and mother used to pray for those boys. She had four boys and a girl. She prayed to God that we didn't get into that. That we came to know Jesus and that we lived like you didn't get caught up into those habits. And then none of us got caught up in them. And so I think it was my mother's prayer. So you mothers pray. And maybe you, I, we get letters all the time. And they'll say, I will pray for my son. Pray for my daughter. Pray for my children. They're drifting away. They used to know Jesus. They used to walk with Jesus. And now they aren't here with us. And they're just off into the world. Please pray for them. And when so when you just pray, mothers. You keep praying. You may not see him come to, in, come to the Lord in your lifetime, but I've seen many a people who've come to the Lord and then they say, I wish, I, would, I wish my mother was still here. She used to pray for me. Mother's with the Lord and I, didn't, I wished I would have done it when she was here. So you just pray, you mothers. Just pray. And, and you know something else about my mother. She never doubted God. And I remember when we were, I lived out on the farm and we got word that we we're going to lose our farm. We couldn't make the payments. And mother, I remember we sat down and mother said, well, here's Matthew 18 and verse 19. This is what it says. Jesus says that if two of you should be, agree on earth as touching anything, that ye shall ask and we've done for you by, of my father, which is in heaven. And so we thought, oh, there's two of us. And we agreed. And so God is going to do that. He's going to take care of us. He's going to save our farm. But we lost our farm. Remember the day the man came out, there's a sheriff, gave us the papers. We had 30 days. Mother never doubted God. I says, well, Mom, we prayed. And it says if two of us agreed, I've learned since then that Jesus taught us that every prayer has to be thy will be done. We have to pray for God's will to be done. It's impossible otherwise because here's, here's two people in this town, two families in a town. One family prays, they'll have a good day for a picnic. The next, and the other family's praying at two o'clock, the same hour, they'll have a rainstorm and cover, help their fields. And how can God give you both sun and rain at the same minute, see? So it always has to be, Jesus says in, the, in that prayer that he taught us, that model prayer, he says, pray thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, anyway, my mother never doubted Jesus. And when it didn't show up or just right or something, she never doubted. Mother always prayed. And then I want to tell you about her determination. She always kept her word. And when she'd say something, believe me, it came to pass, just like Mother said. And she would, and, and she would say, well, you do this or you do that. And we had to do it because if we didn't, we would be in big trouble. So my mother would always talk to us. And when she gave us her word, and we had better obey it. And I remember if we, used, uh, if we used slang or if we sassed her, she said she's going to give us a spanking. And so what would we do? Well, we got old enough so we could outrun mother. She couldn't catch us. But she never chased us ever. She just let us go. And then we would go. Then we'd wait outside, and we didn't have to worry about anything. And she couldn't catch us, and she would never get our spanking. 
But we lived out in the country. We didn't have lights. We didn't have electricity. We didn't have running water. We were so far out in the, you're not going to believe this. We were so far out in the sticks that the sun set before it got to our house. That's where we lived. Well, we, mother could, we didn't worry about anything till it got dark. And when it got dark out in the country, there was no lights anywhere. It was dark as the inside of a cow. And it was just pitch dark. And then you'd hear an owl. And then you'd hear a coyote howl. And then something would brush by and you thought it was a bat. And you went in the house. And when you went in the house, mother had a stick. And mother gave us our spanking. She always kept her word. And you know, I thank God for that. Because this dear mother of mine, the Bible tells us that God chastens every child that he receives. And so we all need correction. And, and I just thank God that I had a mother that corrected me. And if it wouldn't have been for her, I'd probably been an outlaw. I'd probably been in a drunkard's grave or shot in a gambling game. I don't know what would have happened, but she had that stick and she got my attention. And I'm going to tell you, she kept her word. And if she said it, you'd get it. And God tells us that you have to repent and come to him. And he says, if you don't come to him, you're going to die in your sins. You're going to be lost forever. Jesus says in John chapter 5 and verse 24, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Whosoever heareth my word and believeth in me shall not perish, that will not go to hell. But, but if we don't receive him, to them who received him not, there's condemnation. That's hell. And so listen to God. He's dealing with you because he loves you. And then finally, I want to tell you about my mother I want to tell you about her death. My mother lived to be 99 years and five months. She was up and around. She dressed herself. She fed herself. She had no problems at all until the God, day that God took her home. Physically, she was able-bodied, but my mother didn't fare so well in her memory. And little by little, she lost that memory. And one day, she didn't remember any of the past. It was all wiped away. And so when we think about it, I thought, remember one time she had, she had five children. And I remember talking to her one time about her children. And I said, Mother, do you remember Louise? She was the only daughter. And Mother said, no. And then I said, do you remember Stephen? That was the baby. No, no. Do you remember Harold? He's the oldest. He helped you in the home. Do you remember him? No. Then I said, Mother, do you remember Jesus? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I remember Jesus. And I'm going to tell you, friends, that's what you have to have is you have to have Jesus. When everything was gone and all this world has passed, she still had Jesus. And that's why we have the Christian worship hour. And that's why we preach. And that's why we beg you to put your faith in Jesus. Because Jesus said, he that hath the Son, Jesus, he that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. Jesus said that. And so we preach to you to come to Jesus and flee from the wrath to come. You say, well, how do I come to Jesus? Let me tell you how you do it. You just talk to Jesus. Don't get fancy. Just talk in your own words and say, dear Jesus, I have sinned against you and I ask you to come into my heart and take away my sins. And I'll make you the Lord of my life. I'll follow you the best I can. You'll never be perfect, but you promise to do the best you can. And then you thank him for saving you. And then you tell somebody about it so that you witness for the Lord. And Jesus said, whosoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He said in Revelation 3, verse 20, who, I stand at the door and knock. That's the door of your heart into your life. Jesus himself is doing that. And he's asking to come in. And he says, whosoever, and he says, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and ask me in, I will come in and dwell with him and he with me. Just pray that prayer. 
And then if you prayed that prayer, you write to us and we'll send you literature. You write to the Christian Worship Hour. The box is 2002-2002, Aberdeen, South Dakota, 57402. And you write to us. And by the way, you need to help us in this work because we're not underwritten by any denomination. We're not written by any corporation or church or anything else. It's just God's people scattered all over the world. And you know something you can give from all over the world. You just get ChristianWorshipHour.com, and on there's a place to donate, and you can donate in your currency, and we'll get it in our currency, and we'll pay our bills. And, if we, and so you need to pray and ask God, Dear, dear Lord, should I help, help this ministry? Is this something you want? And if you do, then you'll be, sure you be sure to write to us. Christian Worship Hour, Box 2002, Aberdeen, South Dakota. Now I want to pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm praying for all these people coming to you, that they'll come to you and that we can and be born again and have eternal life. And I pray for, Lord, I pray for those in Malaysia, those Christian people who are suffering, that you'll strengthen and help and encourage them. I pray for those who are on beds of sickness. I pray for those who are aged and are shut in and can't get around and can't get out. I pray that you'll help them to know that you promised that I will never leave thee or forsake thee. And you're good, the good shepherd and you carry the lambs, but you carry the old gray heads too. You love us all. And those in old age, we always pray for them. So, dear Lord, draw us all together, young or old, rich or poor, and, um, and wherever we are in the face of the globe, draw us to yourself. Open our hearts. Help us to open our hearts. Find the wonderful Son of God. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And so I want to thank all of you for joining us today. Thank you for opening up your home to us. And you know, Jesus loves you. God loves you. Christian Worship Hour loves you. That's what we're in the business for. And we do it to just to honor God. We have three things in mind, to glorify God, to help the sinners, the lost, come to Jesus and be born again. And then we pray for those who are shut-ins and having trouble. And the older people, God told Isaiah, comfort ye, comfort ye my people. And that's the ministry of the Christian Worship Hour. So God bless you. Have a wonderful Mother's Day, and we're going to be looking for you next week when we're going to talk about the blessings we find in death. You won't believe it until you hear it. God bless you, everyone. My dad loved to preach because he got to tell people of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. If you would like to learn more about having a relationship with Jesus and grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, click the encouragement link on our website at cwh.org. You may also stream more programs, subscribe to our monthly newsletter, and view Pastor Salem's devotions and answers. We would be most grateful if you would pray for this ministry and help us financially to continue proclaiming the gospel. God bless you.